All right, guys. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, I am quite busy at work this time of year. Uh, so this was mostly done, you know, half hour at a time uh, at night uh, when it wasn't too hot in the garage here. Uh, it's pretty warm right now, and uh, but but I'm just so excited. I got this thing up and running, um, and uh, you know, as as you can see next to me here, there there was a little bit more going on, which is why the installation took so long. And I'll I'll show you what's going on with that as well. I had to move my battery up here and everything. So, um, but yeah, let me show you guys what's going on here, and uh, then we'll get to testing. Okay, so I have the. 100 amp 600 volt charge controller. I have the Connex XW Pro. I have the mini PDP. And I have the breakers down here. We got uh, grid in, which I'm running right through it right now. I have grid bypass, which in case something goes wrong or if I just wanna go right, right past it, I can turn this on. And then inverter out, that, that turns off when I turn this on. Then I have the inverter disconnect, that's for the, uh, the battery in, and then the charge controller disconnect. Um, then over here, uh, some of you may have seen this before, but uh, this is my battery combiner. So I have uh, lithium NMC batteries, uh, we're in 16S, so it's about 60 volt, uh, and each one comes into its own circuit breaker, and then they're paralleled in here. Um, this is the uh, battery monitor for the Schneider. They give you a ton of extra wire, which, which comes in handy if you have a large lead acid bank or something. Um, in this case, I just kind of left it looped up there. Um, we have negative and positive out, and then we have a shunt on the negative side that measures power in and out and gives you a fairly accurate state of charge reading, um, and then positive and negative cables to the inverter. What's inside the fridge, you might ask? <laughs> oh, there's my tool shelf. And this is the battery. So these, uh, these modules up top here are smart for two. I have them split in half at 16S, so there's two 16S. Um, it was a total of 32. Then I have uh, four Volvo modules down there and a dirty floor. Um, I'm going to put another five vol Volvo modules in here as well that I have downstairs. I'm about to move them up now. Um, and then in the freezer, I have the Nissan Leaf battery that I built last year. Finally got this up and running, um, and it's doing well. Uh, so you can see underneath here and underneath the batteries down below as well, I have these little uh, seedling starter mats. Um, I've drilled holes through uh, to get the wires in, obviously. Um, I may do a hole kind of through the bottom of this as well, uh, just to allow some heat to rise. But mainly this is out here to keep the thing from freezing. Um, really not concerned about it overheating. Um, I will have a temperature sensor in there, um, you know, to, to make sure that it doesn't. Um, I'm also going to put some smoke detectors in here because I, you know, I'm going to use the uh, wireless type. So just in case, you know, something goes wrong, I'll know about it. Um, Yeah, and then uh, those all come out into the combiner. So they're all connected in parallel with these circuit breakers. Um, and the thing runs pretty well. So right now, uh, battery is almost fully charged. Let's see if you can see that 61.4. Fully charged is about uh, 67, really. And the nice part is, is I can go up to 67. Oh, there you can see it a little bit better. I can go up to 67 with this. Uh, the inverter, I believe, only goes up to 66, um, but the charge controller will go up to 67. So that's that's really the only way I'm charging it right now is with the charge controller. Um, so uh, I want to simulate a power outage here, and I'm gonna gonna aim. Let's see. Let's aim up at some lights. Garage light just turned off. So we're gonna turn the breaker off. This is grid in. There we go, so tiny blink. Tiny blink, nothing else shuts off. Um, the inverter did start humming. Uh, and we're doing 1.91 kW. So it's a hot day, I'm running all kinds of air conditioners, well, two heat pumps. Uh, most of the lights in the house are on because the kids aren't here and that's what they do. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, 
you can see by this blinking light here that means the battery's charging so i got my north facing panels charging up the battery all right i am super excited for this test because uh the solar could not start my air compressor reliably um looking over at the inverter right now we have 1.54 kw um i got this air compressor here same one i tried to start with the solar it would start it occasionally but it really wasn't reliable at all so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try starting this here. The lights didn't even dim. The lights, the lights barely blinked. Let me, let me zoom over to the lights here. All right, here we go. Oh, something else just kicked on. What do we have? 1.7 kW. Just barely a blink. Let me go, uh, we'll go zoom in on the inverter while I do this here. That's awesome. All right, well that, that seemed like it was easy for this thing. Uh, the, the, the air compressor is not quite full. I mean, there's like 30 PSI in it right now. So I'm going to go downstairs, start the dryer, electric dryer. Um, I'm going to leave the camera up here and so you guys can see what's going on here. And I'll be right back. Look at that, we're overloading it now. Wonder how long it'll do that for. I think for a while. I think it'll do that for quite a while. Okay, now I wanna see if this is gonna work. I wanna see if this thing will start my compressor with the dryer running. So we're, we're already maxed out, over maxed out. This is 6.8 kW rated. Let's see what happens. Oh geez, look at that. We're at 7.8 kW right now. Runs it. Look at that, guys. That's amazing. Just going. Guys, that's amazing. This this thing is rated for 6.8 kW, and I'm running the dryer right now. It's at almost 8 kW. You know, it's making a humming noise, but that I mean, that's that's what it does. So. Uh, let's see, I'm pulling 131 amps out of the battery. Uh, I mean, this thing is overloaded like crazy, and it just doesn't shut down. I just started my air compressor with, <laughs> with the dryer running at the same time, and it's just taking it. So this is awesome. I'm, I'm really excited for this. Um, you know, the, the, the Solark, it's called a 12K. It struggles to do eight. Uh, and, you know, most people, they don't, they don't really need over that. You know, some people do, obviously. But the problem with the Solark is, is if it, if it even smells that it's about to get close to overloading, it'll just shut right down. Even when you're running, you know, grid, you know, grid running right through it, you know, without the inverter even doing anything, it'll shut down. Um, this thing will, this thing will keep running until it can't run anymore. Um, from, from what I've seen, at least, I mean, it, it, it you know, now it's down at 7.3, which is still overloaded and it's just, it's just going, it can be overloaded for, you know, a half an hour at a certain amount and, and it'll still go. So, um, yeah, super happy. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this loader laundry running. Uh, you know, get some brownie points because it needed to be moved along anyway, so. So one thing I noticed is that when I ran my toaster with the Solark, whenever, you know, even if the, you know, the grid was on and everything, I would hear a high-pitched whining noise coming out of my toaster until the element heated up.
Nothing. I hear a little bit of a humming. And it's kind of matching the humming I hear out of the uh, inverter, which is right on the opposite wall. I can hear the inverter from here. But no high pitch whining. All right, well, so far, so good, guys. I'm gonna do a whole bunch more testing on this thing. Um, I just barely got the solar hooked up this morning. I actually hooked it up last night because the wires were dead. Um, and I didn't feel like dealing with live 350 volt wires. So, uh, yeah, this thing so far, impressive. Uh, you can see 2.3, 2.4 up here, KW. The dryer's still running. The elements cycling on and off like they do. Um, but this thing is able to run my dryer. Oh, there it goes, back on. 8KW, 7.8. So this thing is able to run my dryer. It's able to run my air compressor while it's running the dryer. And I haven't been able to shut it off yet. I'm sure I could if I really tried. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run on it for now. Uh, and in another video, I'm also going to hook up my solar edge inverter and I'm going to do some AC coupling with it as well. Um, I have it set up downstairs now so I can just flip a couple breakers with a, with a uh, inter interlock and I can switch my solar edge right over to this. So I'm going to probably try to do that next time. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.